Right, um, this is um, a, a review of um, a Doctor Who magazine. Celestial, Celestial Toy Room Summer Special. Um, I'll just read the back of it. Promises of galactic beaches, dressing for the sun and getting stuck with fears and foes. But the TARDIS always takes them to the right place and time where they choose. She rarely goes. And when, and when their feet touch the sand and they breathe the salt air sky, will they stay travelling forever or will they say goodbye? Doctor Who's always been um, an avid interest of, uh, of, of mine ever since I was a very very young child um i, I think at one time I'd, I'd never missed an episode of it i don't think um i like i like i like my music as well i'm i'm going to see uh, i'm going to see david essex live tomorrow at the liverpool philharmonic so so i'll be posting a bit about him but this is um soon this is about Do the doctor who it's like the science fiction, the longest one in... I think it's the longest one in science fiction series on British TV. <coughs> it wasn't actually on for, 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 a, for a long time. It was from... From, from 90... It, it was actually stopped... They, they, they stopped. They actually stopped production of it in 1989. And uh, they, they, they brought it back for, us for, for, for a few specials. And I think it might have been... Um, Sort of nineteen nine. I think it was might might have been uh, the, 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 the twenty first century that that it was actually brought back on TV. But um, this is this is the official uh, this the Celestial Toy Room is the official magazine of Doc, Doc, the, the uh, Doctor Who Appreciation Society, and this is a summer special, and this is um, my review of it. Editorial. I read the first um, a bit of the first page of it. I'll be here all day reading all of it. Hello, editorial by Richard Unwin. Hello and welcome to this summer special spectacular issue of Celestial Toy Room. It's just like a normal issue, but we've written summer special on the cover. One of the first Doctor Who publications that I had a child as a child was the 1991 Doctor Who magazine summer special. The gorgeous cover by Lee Sullivan depicted the Seventh Doctor Ace and Canine being daft on a beach and promised sun-drenched fun and frolics with which to, to while away the school holidays. The fact that most of the contents were actually fairly dry. Text-based articles about filming locations only slightly dented by my enthusiasm. At least... There was a five-page comic, comic strip and learned a lot about the geography of Wales and the North West as a result, plus a photograph of Malcolm from Planet of Fire on page 27 triggered something of an awakening. I'll read a bit more. Th these days, D DWM publishes a, wi a, a wide array of excellent special editions, but it's been a long time since they've produced a holiday special. So I've decided to, to, to have a go at filling that gap myself. As you may have already spotted, this, this issue of CT's completely glorious cover is an updated homage to that aforementioned spe seasonal special dr drawn by fabulously skilled artist Rhys Connolly. Elsewhere in these pages you can also find an interview with Rhys about the Gallifrey cabarets that he's been producing and hosting in London of late alongside his partner Carrot. I read a bit more. <laughs> You'll also find a very special free postcard included with this issue illustrated by the Doctor Who magazine legend Scott Gray. My thanks to Scott for so perfectly composing a thing of beauty from my rather ne nebulous brief the 13th Doctor Yaz and the C Candyman. Hooray! Scott has a wide array of swinging prints and original art available for, for purchase on eBay that are well worth taking a look at. Just search for his name. Well, here's the uh, 
the, the actual postcard that they've e e e inclu included with the, uh, the this edition of the Celestial Toy Mate to Toy Room magazine. Travelling companions. What do the doctor's assistants get up to on their holes? To to help get us all in the holiday mood, we've asked some much loved companion actresses for their personal thoughts and memories of summer breaks. Here's Katie Manning. She she played um Joe. I think was it Joe was it Joe Grant was it that that was the, the assistant of the uh, third doctor jo, do, 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 jo, John Pertwee. I, I don't know the. I don't know the full facts. I don't. I don't think I could actually uh, exactly go on mastermind answering answering dark questions about Doctor Who. I think Katie Manning, to my knowledge, Katie Manning Manning played Joe Grant. She she was one one of the companions in the Tardis of the third Doctor John Pertwee. Uh, they think that's the character she played, and um, they're asking, the, "Do you have any favourite childhood memories of summer holidays?" She, she, she says, regular summer holidays we didn't have because we lived in a very, very different kind of alternative family. And so after, possibly a party that went through until about five o'clock in the morning, my father would suddenly say, right, everybody get in the car. And my mother would know that I had walked out on another newspaper because of their politics. So that meant that we were going to go, we were going to go somewhere. I would be in my nighty getting in the back of the car. And and off we would go on an absolute adventure. We was, we just drove. We st we'd stop at places. We'd go to Italy. We'd go to Spain. And it was never, but it was never planned. We never had a planned holiday. I remember being on the beach and being given bread with oil and salt on it. It was the wonderful sort of freedom of an unplanned life which I've continued with. Do you get recognised while on holiday now? Where, where is the strangest place that you've been spotted? The only sort of planned holiday was when I was running in the West End for three years and everyone has to have their two weeks off at some point. I'd just done the voiceover for British Airways. I, I was with Stuart Bevan at the time and got two free tickets to fly us to Malta. And from the moment I arrived, I was with I was Susanna York. The people there kept saying, Good morning, Susanna, good morning, Miss York. And you and, and you could never quite get out. No, I'm not Susanna York, and so Stuart says was said, Well, you'll just have to be her. So I was I was, I was Susanna York. You see, um it, 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 when you're an actor or an actress, you you, you become the actual characters that you play in, in the minds of a public. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if Susanna York is supposed to be. It's which is just one of the characters that she. When I think when she was in Doctor Who, I think I think she was playing Joe Grant when she was in Doctor Who. I think that's the, 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 I think the, 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 the name of the character was was definitely called Joe anyway. If it wasn't Joe Grant, and that was the name of the character. The, the name of the character she was playing was definitely called. It is another. Um, Doctor Who actress. She, there's there's other other Doctor Who actresses here. Sophie Aldred, Nicola Bryant. So 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 Sophie Aldred. She was with Sylvester McCoy. She was. Nicola Bryant was with Pete. With with um, with with was with, with Pete. She was with Peter Davison, and 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 Colin Baker. G G G Colin, G G they were the two guys that played the Doctor before Sylvester McCoy came on the scene because he's been played by a lot of doc different actors Doctor Who has because um, it, as, as you probably know he's a, he's a Time Lord and the, the, the Time Lords can actually can have the ability to regenerate that is... Um, the, 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 it's like a cat has nine lives. They, they have more than one life, and they, they can regenerate so many. They've got the ability to regenerate so many times, and um, the, the 
when 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 the body starts to get old and weary, or they they can't go on existing in in their present form for some reason or other, they they regenerate it in, into um, change. They, they regenerate the, the the appearance changes in, into into that of another person. The um, I, I, I wish human beings could regenerate. My, my mother could have regenerated into into quite a decent woman. I mean, that could have could have done as well. But um, un, unfortunately, we humans we haven't got the ability to do that. But time lords have, and uh, that, that that's why the do, the do, the doctor's been played by um, a, a number of different a actors. But the but the thing is, James but the, the, the James Bond's been played by quite a few different actors. But um, and and he's human. I mean, humans can't regenerate. That's why, that's why I find straight puzzling about James Bond. I don't. How how could he have changed his appearance? How could James Bond have changed his appearance? Because humans can't regenerate, can they? It's it, um, I, I I don't know where it it doesn't doesn't make sense at all. Um, the, 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 the first actor to play James Bond is dead now. Sean Connery is he, he's dead. What? Um, that's the, this. The, the Celestial Toy the, 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 the Toy Room is the official magazine of of the. Um, with Doctor Appreciation Society. The, there's an article. The, the, the Gallifrey Cab Cabaret. You see, uh, the, 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 the planet where, where the Doctor originates from is called Gallifrey. That's the, where the Time Lords live, on Gallifrey. There's, there's been a disturbance in the vortex at London's R R Royal Vauxhall Tavern of, of, of late. The historic... LGBT plus venue has been playing host to a series of Gary Fay cabarets. Evenings of unique entertainment is by by Doctor Who, where anything can and frequently does happen. We spoke to the brains behind the events, partly in performance as well as in as well as in life. Reese Connolly and Carrot. Um, screaming jungle. Time Queen, what's this article about here? Interview with Bethany Blake. But Bethany Blake is an actress who played both Queen Elizabeth I and the mysterious Time Lord guide in the immersive theatre production Doctor Who Time Fracture, which has been running in London off and off on and off for over a year and finally closed its portals this June. Hello, Your Majesty, how did you come to be involved in Time Fracture? In the normal way, through auditioning, when I got this job, it was kind of just coming out of COVID. It was one of very few jobs going at that time. And then after auditioning, we went into another mini, mini lockdown. So I actually got the job. But then we didn't start working on it until a good while later because of the world. Had you seen much Doctor Who before you got the gig? How much did you know about what you were getting into? I knew about the Doctor, I knew about the TARDIS, sonic screwdrivers, time travelling and universe saving. I did that th that thing that I I did that thing that, that I think a lot of people who aren't Doctor Who fans do. I watched it at Christmas. That was my knowledge of it really. I'd seen the Christmas specials. And every time we watched it at Christmas my mum and dad would talk about how they used to hide behind the sofa for my Daleks. What was the rehearsal process like? Was there much devising to be done, or was there a rigid script, rigid script to follow? We had a storyline. The Gallifrey section, I think, had always been written, and then was rewritten and rejigged as the actors responded to it. Unit maybe had some pre-written bits, but Queen Elizabeth's Court was never a set script. We mainly worked from a beat-to-beat -beat structure, and finding the words that connected those beats was part of a process and 
that, and then once we got it got it up on its feet some of those things changed again you've been playing two two parts queen elizabeth the first and time lord guide did you have a favorite they were both a lot of fun i think it depended on how big the audience w w was or what kind of audience they were when we had the really big crowds like full capacity i was very glad to be the queen because the queen doesn't do audience management when i was with the time lord guide you're trying to get people from place to place and if it's full and you're trying to squeeze past hordes of people then it's not as much fun queen elizabeth appeared to be you had to have quite an elaborate costume how, how was it to wear i mean heavy it was exactly that elaborate and gorgeous and beautiful and beautifully beautifully made the costume was, was stunning but very heavy let's talk about time lord guide as audience members we had a pretty good idea of who these characters were meant to be did you ever officially confirm their identities in rehearsal discussions i mean it was very much a case of wink wink you're, you're not the doctor because we're not legally allowed to say that you are by the bbc you're definitely not the doctor wink wink but we were gallifrey and time lords that was allowed we could say that we had a tardis which stands for time and relative dimension in space we just didn't have it with us we've lost the sonic whoops a daisy but we were very much not the doctor wink how many shows would you actually do in a day because it's a kind of like a rinse and repeat thing if we did it double a double show day we, it would be six times two shows each with three wet waves of audience and would you tend to stay as the same character all day we switch it up between shows so play the queen in the morning for example and then be tight the time lord guide in the evening which gave the laundry department time to take care of your costume and all that do, do you have any unexpected interu interactions with the audience? How close did you get to coming out of character? Any mishaps? I wouldn't say mishaps. There were audience members who perhaps didn't understand what in immersive theatre was. and We were getting frustrated. So I did end up getting breaking character to explain that they should follow the stories and answer questions if they were asked. I basically told them that they'd come from unit um were now in a different world and here's what's happening because they just weren't enjoying themselves but once i'd broken it down and sent them on their way they seemed to get into it but i guess that's the thing with immersive if you don't know what you're getting into it can be bewildering <laughs>